Hey everybody, Mr. White here. We are going to talk about a specific type of circuit today, the series circuit. So a series circuit is a circuit where all of the circuit's components are along one path or one loop. Uh, so if you have bulbs or resistors or a refrigerator or anything that can be hooked into the circuit, it will be along the same path as everything else. Now in a series circuit, the current is constant everywhere in the circuit. Because there's only one pathway, there can only be one rate of flow. Uh, and so electrons are going to flow by each second at any given point in this series circuit because, well, again, there's only one pathway. They all have to kind of match up. Mathematically, we can say that the total current of the loop is equal to the current running through resistor 1, which is equal to the current running through resistor 2, which is equal to the current running through resistor 3. Now this means that the same amount of coulombs per second are passing at every point in the circuit. An analogy I like to use when talking about series circuits and current uh, is traffic. So if you've ever been on Highway 580 in the afternoon, you know it's a nightmare. Uh, what's happening is up at the Altamont Pass, which is up a little past Livermore, the freeway reduces uh, width. So instead of all the cars fitting comfortably on, say, five lanes, the freeway reduces down to four lanes. And you can kind of think of this as a resistor of sorts. You're, um, you have some resistance. That's going to reduce the flow of cars. The number of cars passing a point each second is going to decrease. Well, that effect starts to carry over as cars behind those front cars slow down and then cars behind those cars slow down and so on and so on until that effect makes it all the way back to Dublin. Now this is one pathway and so there really is no other option because you couldn't have cars in traffic here moving really, really quickly and then cars right here moving really, really slowly. The same number of cars must be passing per second here as passing per second here. It wouldn't make sense otherwise because where were the cars, if they were moving really quickly here, where would they be going if you have cars moving really, really slowly here? So if we reply that to electric circuits, would it make sense to say, well, more electrons are flowing past this point every second than this point every second. And that would be like asking, well, does it make sense in this single pathway of cars for more cars to be passing this point every second than this point every second? And it actually doesn't make any sense because, well, that would mean that you would have to have uh, cars moving a lot faster here uh, than cars here. And how would that physically be possible? Resistance in a series circuit is really straightforward. You just add up all the resistors. So for example, if I had three one ohm resistors in a series circuit, uh, I could add all those up and I get a total of three ohms. And that's equivalent to having one big three ohm resistor in the circuit by itself. So again, just to calculate the total resistance for a series circuit, you just add up all the resistors. Now voltage gets divided across each of the resistors in a series circuit. Um, and so we know that, you know, when charges are flowing and they go through a resistor, they're bumping into the resistor and, and transferring energy. That's how we get energy to our devices, our resistors, when we plug them in. Um, and so that means since energy is being taken away from charge, the potential difference between that point in the circuit and the end of the circuit decreases. And so across resistors, we say there's a voltage drop because there's, a, there's less potential difference from that point um, to the end of the circuit. Uh, and so all of the resistors in a series circuit use up the voltage from the voltage source. Um, and it really depends on how much resistance each resistor has. Uh, that's what determines how much voltage drops across the resistor. Higher resistors with higher resistance use more voltage. And when we add more resistors, um, that means less energy gets distributed to each of the resistors in a series circuit. So for example, let's say you're sitting in a kitchen by yourself and there's six pancakes. Well, you just got yourself six pancakes. And let's say your sibling comes downstairs and now there's six pancakes for the two of you. So you each get now three pancakes. And so the more people you add to the kitchen, the less pancakes you get. And that's kind of how resistors and voltage work. I have a five volt voltage source and some Christmas lights. When I hook up one bulb, it is very bright. It's getting all five volts. When I hook up two bulbs, they're not as bright and have to share the voltage. Since they are the same bulbs, we can assume that they are sharing the voltage evenly, so about 2.5 volts per bulb. 
When I hook up all three bulbs, they are very dim since they are sharing voltage across all three bulbs now, each receiving about 1.67 volts. Here's a better comparison. In a series circuit, when more resistors are added, each receives less energy since voltage has to be shared across all resistors. Now if we want to know exactly how much voltage a resistor uses, we can follow a few quick steps. Uh, we start by finding the total resistance in the circuit. And again, to do that, we just have to add up all the resistors. So in our example here, we have a 9-volt battery hooked up to a circuit with three resistors. Uh, resistor has one ohm of resistance, another one has two ohms, and the final has three ohms of resistance. And so our total resistance for this circuit is the sum of all those resistors, which is six ohms. Now we need to find the total current running through the entire circuit. Remember, a series circuit, the current is the same no matter where you check. And so to find that, we use Ohm's law. We just rearrange it to find current. And we take the total voltage that's given to the circuit from, in this case, our battery, 9 volts, and divide that by the total resistance that we just found. And so uh, total voltage over total resistance in our example here is nine volts divided by six ohms. That gives us 1.5 amps. Now we can find the voltage used by a resistor. And so we'll look at the one ohm resistor first. To find that again, we use Ohm's law and we multiply the total current going through the circuit, which is the current going through the resistor, multiplied by the amount of resistance. And so this is easy. 1.5 amps times 1 ohm gives us 1.5 volts. Now the fourth step I like because it allows you to check your work, um, but it also involves finding the voltage for all of the resistors. Because what should happen is that the voltage used by each individual resistor, if you take all those and add them together, you should get your original supplied voltage, in this case 9 volts. And so if we do the math and we find the voltage used for each of these resistors, we see that their voltages all add up to 9 volts. And so we checked our work. It's correct. Uh, we now know that, um, you know, how much voltage each resistor uses. And take notice that the more resistance, the more voltage was used up by that resistor. All right, in summary, with series circuits, when you add devices, that decreases current because you're adding more resistance. You're causing more delays. You're having to distribute energy to more things, and that's going to cause the amount of charge flowing by each second to decrease. If we use Ohm's law, we can see that uh, the current is equal to the amount of voltage divided by resistance. And so if you increase resistance, increasing your denominator, your total current is going to decrease current and resistance are inversely proportional. In a series circuit, voltage gets divided or shared amongst the resistors. So you're taking the same amount of energy and you're dividing it up over more things as you add resistors. And so each of those things is going to get less energy naturally. If one thing in a series circuit dies, the entire circuit dies. So if you look at the image here of the circuit, if this bulb were to go, for example, if it were to break uh, that opens the circuit, uh, charge can't flow, you'd have no current, and so the remaining bulbs won't work. If this bulb were to break, same thing happens because you need a complete circuit in order for charge to flow, in order to have current. And so if one of these elements breaks, the entire circuit breaks as well. And that can be really annoying um, if you've ever worked with Christmas lights that are wired in series. If one of the bulbs in that strand of Christmas lights breaks, the entire strand breaks and you have to check each bulb to figure out which one is bad so that your Christmas lights will light back up. That can be really annoying, let me tell you from experience. But this can also be helpful like in uh, fuses and circuit breakers or even light switches where you want an entire series circuit to shut off um, if you flip a switch, you want your lights to turn off. If a fuse or circuit breaker pops, there was probably a safety reason, and you want that entire circuit to shut off. That's a good thing. All right, finally, a super summary with the summary of summaries. Sure. Uh, series circuit is just one loop. It's one path for charge to flow. And remember, anywhere in that path, current or the amount of charge per second flowing by is always the same no matter where you check. Resistance for the entire circuit is just the sum total of all of the resistors. Just add them all up. 
And when you add more elements, you add more resistors to the circuit, you decrease the current. You're increasing resistance, you're naturally going to decrease current. Voltage gets divided or shared by all of the resistors, and if one of those resistors dies, the entire circuit dies. All right, we're going to do some practice problems now, so make sure you pause when the question pops up so that the answer doesn't pop up too quick and see how you do. All right, I hope that helped. If you have any additional questions, please get that extra help. Come to office hours, ask for help if you need it. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.